Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Octoman and uh, this is a tutorial about how to create a yeah, unit selector for RTS games in Unity using the Canvas system. So everybody knows that the Canvas system is the new UI system since a couple of years already and usually you can also make use of the old UI system but I wanted to discover how to make this one with the Canvas because well I'm working on a course already about how to create an RTS system and I thought that might be a cool way to show you how I actually did it or how I do would do it and explain it to you. So if you have any questions and so on and so forth, the live chat should be enabled in this as well. So feel free to ask anything whenever you please and like. So the very, very first thing is we need to understand what we are going to do with the canvas. And of course, we need to understand how the world is going to work. So what I would go for is pretty quickly just create a small world and probably something we are able to select. So give it the possibility to select it. And whenever we are done with that or when I am done with that, I'm going to show you the way how all that stuff works. So let's get into it. At first, I just create a little plane, you know, nothing fancy about it and give it probably some colors. So I go over here, right click into my assets folder and just say I'm going to create some materials, you know, like a green or something for my ground. So basically, it's just important that we have something which has a collider on it and everything else is coming over and over. So I mean, while we are going slow. So I'm going to give it a green and a bit of darker one so we can see stuff better over there and just tint the plane. So uh, what I now need, of course, I need to have something I can select. So it doesn't really matter if it is a static one or not. We just need to make sure that we prepare it correctly and have the selector. So whichever is representing the selection itself is going to sit under it so we get a representation of that. We can also make use of gizmos if we like to, but probably that's not a good one for this particular point since you want to have something maybe like a selection circle sitting under your unit under your object under whatever you want to select so whenever you have this cube over here I uh, can also go and later on duplicate this so so we're gonna be able to select multiple things so let's assume this is going to be our unit you can make use of a, you know a, or your own 3d models basically it doesn't really matter as long as there's something like a collider on it which we can make use of of course to select it so what we want to have is I, I'm gonna put a quad at the bottom over there so this is going to be where my graphic is going to be on for my selection circle so we can highlight the ones we currently have selected how does it work is well I just select the cube over here and put in a a quad you can also use anything else whatever you like and please of course I'm gonna rotate by 90 degrees and scale it up a bit so as you can see with this quad is from the bottom is transparent so you make sure that just this part is going to be on top then you make sure that you bring it down and slide bit over the uh, yeah the ground plane so you can always see that so basically this is going to be our selector object and it is always helpful for you and for everybody else of course just to make sure to rename this as being a selector you can also rename your cube to be whatever unit it is it all depends once again on whatever you're going to create so again uh, when it comes to rts this is going to be later on your main graphic or whatever so instead of a cube also you make sure that you use you know all the settings for the movables and stuff like that but that's not what we're gonna care about right now so for the selector we're gonna make use of or we need to create well that was the wrong button um, we need to create a new material which is going to be a transparent material so we only see the selection ring I'm gonna show you in a second how we're gonna create the selection ring or how you can do it even if you have no idea about creating graphics at all so um, I need to create a material and this is going to be my selection material or selector material. You can once again name it whatever you like, even if you have any typos, doesn't really matter. It is important that you set this one to be a cutout map over here. So everything which is later on going to be transparent on the material or which we're going to put in to the albedo channel is going to be cut it away. So and uh, to do so, to create such a selector, I'm going to recommend, as always, Inkscape. Inkscape is a super program where you can just create a circle as going to be our graphic for the selector. You can, of course, make any other shape over here. So if you have no idea about creating anything, you can just hold down control key 
and just do something like that. Uh, just drag it from left to right and give it a color in the bottom over here. And you see, okay, this has the full color or the fill color of being black. What we also have is a stroke color, which is going to be the lower one. So by holding shift, I can just put a stroke color on that. When I now hold shift again and, or well, in this case, without holding shift, I'm going to say, okay, I don't want to have any fill. So I have a transparent circle. So once again, the color really does not really matter at all. So I'm going to go to the selection tool over here and just make this one a rather small one. So in the end, you can, or you can, you make it big and small and whatever you please and like. You just need to make sure that you later on export this one as however you need it. So meaning I'm going to make this one black so I can see it better. You can go to a stroke style and you can make it big and small. Basically, it doesn't really matter how big it is. As long as it is big enough, but not too small. And you can later on see this good in your game. If you are unhappy with it, go back to the step, make it bigger or smaller and so on and so forth. So next one is you want to go to PNG export, which is usually sitting over here export png file and it's going to be open over there like whenever you press on that you're gonna get this open or export png part i have no idea where, where it is at the moment oh, oh down below of course so this is the export area and here we want to export the selection and you can set this one to be something like 120 uh, yeah 128 so 100 by uh, 28 by 128 this should be your exporting part also, you want to make sure that the stroke is not black, but white. So later on, you can just take this particular graphic with a white one, like so. I just hold down shift once again. So the selection circle is going to be white. And now you can export it to wherever you like and please. Uh, you can rename it. You can put it into any pass. And whenever you press that, you only set the pass. Once you're done with the pass, you're going to press the export button. I have done this already. So I just wanted to make sure you know how this is going to work. Okay, and that's basically everything we need for the selection graphic. If you want to, since we are here already, we also want to create our um, selector graphic for the canvas later on. So this is basically a containing of a f yeah, six cubes or something like that. So you're going to go to this area over here, the rectangle tool. I'm going to change the color to the fill color to black so we can see what's going, uh, going to happen over here. So whenever I drag, I hold on control and go diagonal and I'm going to create one of these. I hold on shift and make sure I don't have any stroke. And now what I want to do is I want to duplicate this several times and bring this next to each other. Whenever the snapping tool is on, this is the little button over here, then you're going to be able to snap to corners and stuff like that. So this is recommended to have this one on. So you can also take multiples, Control D to duplicate and just snap it down below once again. I'm going to take these, hold down Shift to uh, multiple select or just go over and cover the complete area. So this is going to be nothing else than our graphic for our selection. Whenever you export this, of course, make sure you're going to put this into white as well. And also make sure that the export size is 3 by 3 pixels. And make sure that you have selected the selection. So what does it mean is every pixel over here is going to be one pixel broad. Like length and width or length and height are going to be one by one. So we're going to have a 3 by 3 and the certain center is going to stay transparent. So we can tint it with any other color of our liking or we keep it transparent. Make sure you put this over here and give it a name, like a selection and maybe this circle later on, once again, with just the outline, but nothing inside, is going to be exported correctly into your folder. Hit the export button every time you are done with these setups. Once again, this 128 by 128, this one 3 by 3 pixels. Okay. Whenever you are done with exporting, we're going to go back over here into our project and I'm going to open my folder where I have these graphics already inside. And what I want to do is I just drag the selector over here and I drag the selector ring over here. That's how mine are called and nothing fancy at all with that. So this selector ring does now need to go to our um, selector material and the material needs to go to the selector quad. So once again, we drag the selector quad over here and the selector ring and the selector you might want to well these graphics want to change their default to be straight to dui i'm gonna explain why in a moment as well so now i see the transparency is going to come in place and now in this uh, selector material wherever you want to select it you're gonna drag the selector ring into the albedo channel and instantly you can see that we only see this ring over here 
Hi, Oscar. Welcome to the uh, yeah little live stream over here. And thanks for the good words. So next part is going to be the selector itself. We're going to need to prepare this one completely correct over here. So uh, in that case, we need to go to the sprite editor by selecting it. As you can see over here, we're going to have the one by one by one pixels width and height. And in the center is going to be transparent. What we now need to do is we need to set a border since these are going to be a tiled or sliced yeah, um, your graphic over here. So the border needs to be set to be 1, 1, 1, 1. And as you can see in the center, we're going to see just this little cube or yeah graphic over here. So what does it mean is these parts over here, like all these ones, are going to be stretched, but the corners will not be touched. That's it. Don't forget to apply the changes to the, you know, to the graphic and close the sprite editor. Now we create a canvas for our selector itself. In that case, we go to yeah to our hierarchy panel, go into I don't know UI and somewhere is the canvas. And also you get the event system which we need for all the player inputs, no matter what. And the next one is we need an image to put our selected graphic on it. So we go once again to UI. Don't forget to select the canvas and make sure you're gonna create an image over here. So and since we cannot see this quite good, I'm gonna zoom out a bit and go to 2D mode. And this is going to be our selected graphic. We can, you know bring this to wherever place we like and please. And now we just make sure that our selector is going to sit on our image. And But not as a sprite, we need to put it over here into the sprite image like this. So what you can see is this is like, you know, a complicated filling in this one from the outside to the inside and the transparent one is not going to be how we want it. In the end, we just need to make sure that we're going to take the image type over here and change this one to tiled. Then you see some kind of a grid over here. Don't overdo it because this grid is rather picky. So instead make use of or actually deactivate fill center. What does it mean is we only see the outside of our yeah, piece over there. And why did we actually export this one with a white outline is because now we are able to tint it into any color we like. Green, blue, red, purple, whatever you please like. And usually you're going to have in games which are a bit darker, you have something like lime greenish colors. And that's everything basically we need to do with that. I'm gonna make sure that this is going to be my selector so I can rename it over here just in case. Once again, naming convention is king. And this canvas is only taking care of the selector. Later on, when you go and fiddle around with user interface and all the other stuff, do not put it in the same canvas. So this is the selection canvas only. Just keep that in mind. This is ultra important. And why is that so? Because we need to stay with constant pixel size setting in the canvas scaler. We cannot make use of scale with screen size just for that particular part over here. So make sure you keep this on constant pixel size. Otherwise, you will have strange behavior. Trust me. Okay, with that out of the way, we just need to make sure that we, you know, do some coding and actually based on the graphics, we are good to go with that. So we have our unit with a selector. We can later on copy and paste it several different ones, doesn't really matter. And then we have the selection canvas as well as our selection image. If you want to give it a bit more Beef, I would say you can also select the selector, make use of another image inside that. Give it also maybe the green tint, but maybe you make it just semi-transparent. So you can see, as probably have seen in the preview, that we're going to have some semi-transparent background over here. The only thing is you need to take care of is that this image need to have on this over here. So hold down the Alt key and select on the uniform stretch. So what does it mean is whenever we are now fiddling around with the selector, the, the image which is sitting now under it basically is going to follow and is stretching with the size of the selector itself. Okay, we can uh, basically, we are done with the basic setup so far and we're gonna later on uh, put a, or yeah, play around with the selector anchor, but we're gonna do this yeah once again later on. So, and that's basically it. Now we just need to make sure that we create a new empty game object 
you don't have to, but probably it's a good one. And we're gonna name it a selector. And in here we can uh, create a new C -sharp script. And I have created mine over here already of type, yeah, C -sharp, once again, it is called unit selector. And I bring this unit selector, of course, over here in this. And open this one up in Mono Develop Visual Studio or whatever uh, IDE you are using. I opened mine already since I have a rather picky one at the moment. So I hope you can read it. If not, just let me know. So I'm gonna uh, do some changes over there to this. So I can also go in and, uh, you know, zoom in. But I believe it's looking good in the size. So what do we need to do is at first we need to create a unit, uh, actually, a rect transform for our image so we can manipulate everything. For now, I'm gonna get rid of start and update so we're gonna see everything a bit better probably later on. So, first off, once again, we need to have a selection rectangle or a rect transform. It needs to be public because we want to set this one by hand into this unit selector script. So, we create a new public and this needs to be a rect transform. Pretty important, and this is going to be basically our selection image or selector image. So once again, it's not of type ima uh, of type image because we need to go and change the rect transform of this particular image over there. Also, we have a mathematical part over there where we need to have a rect, which is going to be the selection rectangle. So this is a different one to the rect transform because the canvas system is quite picky when it comes to uh, switching you know, graphics and stuff like that. So we're going to do the, the pure selection, the invisible selection with the rect, but the graphic re representation is going to be done with the rect transform over there. Okay, cool. So the next one is we need to have a start and an end position. Basically, well, just that. So we can make use of vector twos because we are in a 2D space inside the canvas. No problem at all. I'm going to name my first one start position or start POS. And the second one is going to be end POS or end position. You name it, whatever you please and like once again. So what we want to do is we want to have some update in uh, like the update loop inside. We're going to do some um, yeah, updates, of course, by listening to the inputs from the mouse. And we're going to have several different ones over there because we also want to make sure that whenever we are only clicking once, like we want to select a single object, we're going to have a different way instead of creating this rectangle. So. And what do we want to do is we want to, first off, in update, we want to check if there is somebody actually, you know, doing a click with the mouse. So in that case, we're going to take the unity provided function input dot mouse, or in this case, get mouse button down. So we want to just initialize one click. So get mouse button down, I'm going to take the left mouse key. That means it's represented by number zero over here. And whenever we are doing that, we want to set our start position to be equal to uh, our mouse position, basically. So in that case, we can say input dot mouse position. So we store the mouse position now in the start position. So we can later on rip it apart and uh, yeah, take away whatever we need. And then we can draw the rect based on that. Also, whenever we do a click, we want to create a new rectangle for our selection rect. So in that case, selection rect is equal to new rect. It's basically just a new instance of rect. We can probably get rid of that part, but I would like to reset things whenever we are you know, just changing stuff. So also what we want to do later on, we want to make sure that we, for example, deselect all whatever we want or we have selected already. I just make a comment over here so you know that later on uh, what's going on over here. So what we also want to know is if somebody is holding down this uh, mouse button. In that case, we want to, you know, but meanwhile holding it down, we want to drag the mouse and see where is the graphical representation for our dragability. So in that case, we're going to create another or re request get mouse 
um, button. So button means we just hold down a button. Of course, it's going to be the same button. That's the left mouse button. And meanwhile, we are doing that. We want to set our end position to be equal to input dot mouse position, meaning our end position updates. Well, not present, but mouse position. Our uh, meanwhile, we're holding down. We want to update this the whole time. So. What I want to do is I want to uh, calculate uh, our real rectangle. So the rectangle where we do the actual root, uh, yeah, the actual, um, yeah, the actual rect over here, which is wherever it is right now. I don't know. Oh, this one, the selection rect. Also, we want to draw the rectangle. So we're gonna create a new, uh, yeah, function which is called draw rectangle. I gonna create this function well without typos. Uh, I guess I can just uh, create this one over here. Yeah, it looks good. So we want to create a new one. Uh, it is still private, of course, but doesn't really need this keyword over here. So whenever we draw this one, we want to recalculate the start position as well as the end position and actually uh, create the rectangle just draw it so once again it's not the actual selection so what we're gonna do so we can uh, basically name it something like maybe box start or a rectangle start whatever it's basically nothing else than the start position we already got then we want to have another one another vector two in this case we want to calculate the center of the box and how do we calculate this is basically we're gonna take the start position box start but in that case, we need to add our end position to this. So the current position or the first click position and add our current end position. And then we divide this by two. So what we now need to do is we need to reposition the center of our rectangle. In that case, we can just say selection image dot position is equal to center. So we just center it out, meaning we are not going to shift it like it's not going to be anyhow a negative number. Well, hopefully, and to avoid this negative numbers by, you know, overdoing it, we're going to create two floats which are taking care of that. And the first one is going to be our size X. So how big an X is going to be the size of our rectangle. And we need to make it so that it is always a positive number. And that's for, we are going to make use of massf.abs, also called absolute. So it's always a positive number. Whatever this number is going to represent, it's always a positive number up from zero to unlimited. So what we now want to calculate to get the correct size is, of course, it is a start x or start dot x minus our end position x. So we know the complete size in x. Now, of course, we need to do this for the y axis since we have two axes in a rectangle, x and y. So I just uh, copy the complete line and put a y over here wherever it is needed. In that case, box y or a start position y and end position y stuff like that and now we do uh, the recalculation for the size of this rectangle which is a bit specific um, specific to the canvas itself in that case it is selection image and now we want to set the size delta of it to be equal to and now of course we need to create a new vector 2 and put in our size x and our size y first size x and then comma size y like that uh, doesn't let me like that okay so once again we're gonna draw the rectangle already an update whenever we are holding down the mouse button button and that is just a graphic representation once again it's just drawing it it's not going to do the actual selection so and whenever we go now back over here into our uh, yeah, Unity and let the compiler run, we should have a slot over there for our image to be dragged in. In this case, it's a selector image represented by a rect transform. Now I take the selector, not the image, just the selector and drag it in over here. And now we can press play and we should see well, at the moment, we're going to still see this image over here. It is not resizing itself because it is not scaled with the screen size. But when I hold down the left click, then drag, you can see 
we're going to have our selection window over here. Whenever I let go, it still does not, or it does not update itself. It, like it is not resetting itself to wherever or disable itself in that case. But that's what we need over here as well. So what we need to do is, of course, whenever we let go the left mouse button, we want to reset a start and end position. In that case, we can just say if input dot and of course we need to get the mouse button up in this case so whenever we release it number zero once again for the left click we just want to make sure that the start position is going to be equal to vector 3.0 or vector 2.0 because we are working with a vector 2 and we're going to do the same for the end position over here we can also simplify this process if you only want to have everything in one line you can just say is equal i guess it works something like that is equal to end position and both of them are going to be equal to vector 3.0 or vector 2.0 and what we also want to do is we want to draw the rectangle just once again just in case to update the graphic and that's everything we need to do for updating it so don't forget to save of course and let's see how this is working so far over here i'm gonna press play And currently we do not update this in start, so we can do the same in start as well, we should. And now whenever I let go, you can see it's going to go, be gone. Basically it resets itself to zero, zero. We don't need to calculate the center because uh, once again, the draw rectangle is going to do that. Also whenever you're pressing play and select the selector, you can see the width and the height are equal to zero. So this is what the basic is going to do over here. Once again, I'm going to implement the void start function over there. So open close parentheses. And in here, we can just say, OK, we want to draw the rectangle. But uh, in that case, it should automatically reset or takes a vector 3.0 for start position x and uh, or for the start position and the end position. And we shouldn't see that directly in the beginning whenever we press play. As you can see, not visible. We can draw in any direction, up, down, left, right, from wherever we have started. So the next point is basically just how do we select this little image over there or this little unit over there. So first off, of course, we need to declare what a unit is, but I don't cover this too deeply. I just want to make sure that you get the idea about the unit itself. So we're going to create a little uh, unit yeah, script over here. We can name it whatever. Just unit maybe. And make sure that we add the unit script whenever the compiler is done running, of course up until we gonna or on to come on let me on to our unit itself once again we don't cover movement and all the other stuff this is going to be a stuff of you know the course but i'm gonna open this one up so what do we need here is well we need a connection on our unit for the selector itself so we just create a public game object you know and then just selector so and in start, we want to make sure, of course, that we deactivate the selector by just, you know, the user parts over there. In this case, we can just say selector dot set active, and then an open close parentheses. We're going to put in false, so we deactivate the selector. Now we need to have a create a function which is basically talking to our unit in this case, and what we're going to do is it's going to be a public. Uh, function in this case we can maybe name this one set selector set selector and it is going to be of type void and we can basically even that would be nice over there so instead of doing this stuff in start I'm gonna copy this or cut it out and bring this over here and we can make a argument inside over there of type boolean and we're gonna name it on and whatever we are going to paste in to this we're gonna set our activation to be whatever on is so we just need to call set the lector and say false over here and now we also can do this from anywhere in the scenes as long as this one is public and we have a connection to it. So just for the selector in this particular case. So and now we just need to store or think about where do we store this unit whenever we have some selected. And of course, we need to make sure that we're going to do all the calculations for the 
real selections over there. So in our if get mouse button, so meanwhile we are dragging, we want to calculate the second rectangle, so the real selection rect over here, and make it so that we are going to scale this in the correct size. And based on the correct size, we want to make sure that we check if something is inside this rectangle. So we can actually, you know, make the selector enab or enabled and disabled in this case. And to do that, we're going to, you know, calculate once again the actual selection rectangle. So this is going to be a tricky, uh, a tricky one, just a bit calculations, uh, math mathematics over here. So calculation, uh, calculation. So what we want to do is we want to first check where's our mouse, or in this case our X mouse position, and we want to set, or we want to see if that is lower than our start position, or is it higher than that. And according to that, we want to update or activate the um, the min and the max values inside the selection rectangle. What does it mean? Is once again, I'm gonna type it out. If input dot mouse position dot x is smaller than our start position dot x, start pos. Dot x, then we know, okay, we are in the left of the start position, so from the left way, and in that case, we want to set our selection rect dot x minimum, so our x min to be equal to input, so basically our x position of the mouse, so input dot mouse position dot x. And also, since we have two values inside, we have also a maximum value for the selection rect. We're gonna say selection rect dot x max is going to be equal to whatever our start position x is. So as you can see, we just update the minimum value by whatever the mouse position is and the maximum value, whatever the start position is, because we are left of the start position. We're gonna have to do the same for the other side, for the right position. So gonna say else, open close pair of parentheses, and then we just take this part over here, I'm gonna copy and paste this in here, and I just need to switch the values. So what does it mean is I'm gonna take this away, and the start position X lands in the top, and the input mouse position lands in the bottom. So we just switch the input. And since we are doing this here only for the X axis, we also need to do the same stuff for the Y axis. So I'm gonna make a little Y command over here, put this here in between, and everywhere in this, uh, from here starting on, I'm gonna need everything being, uh, what is currently in X, needs to be in Y. So I'm gonna update like everything. Same here, Y min, Y max, X here is going to be like everything, wherever you see an X, all of that needs to be a y, y value because once again, it's going to be basically doing the same. The calculation is going to do the same, but from top to bottom or bottom to top. Don't forget to save. And now we just need to check if something basically is inside this selection rectangle. For that, I'm gonna create a little helper function once again, since once again here, this is just a graphical representation. Now we need to check if we are you know, inside the a real uh, selected unit, so or selection rectangle, basically. So the easiest way is once again we create a new function for that. Is we're gonna check for selected units. So check selected units. And we don't need to do anything over here. Once again, it's just of type void since it doesn't return anything. And now we can basically loop through everything we're gonna have somewhere. I'm gonna go about the somewhere in just a moment. But what we basically do is we just check if our selection rect dot contains, if it contains something. And now what does it need to contain is, now we need to make use of our main camera. This is super important. So camera.main, okay, main camera is the main camera, which is actually, you know, set to be the main camera. I'm gonna tell you in a moment where it is and how it is going to be the main camera. So from camera.main, and now we take the world to screen point, this one. And what we now want to do is we want to request a position over here. So a vector to point, meaning where, where is that actually being inside our selection rect at whatever the 
position is where this entity or this unit is going to be inside. For now, I'm gonna put in a transform the position so we don't have any mistake over here or any yeah, red lines. So if that is the case, we want to do something. And of course, what we want to do is we want to activate the selector on each of these selected units. Okay, but for we need to understand or we to need to know where is our unit or how much units do we got over there. And to do that, we're gonna create a little a super little uh, function or script for that once again. I'm gonna create a C sharp script pretty quick. And this is maybe going to be our selection manager. So he's taking care of what is selected, who can be, who can be selected, and so on and so forth. So every type unit entity, for example, or every type of unit can be done, can be actually sitting inside the selection manager. So I double click to open once again, I will get like a three error messages or something like from the firewall again. So don't confuse or don't be confused about it. I just uh, click it away as quick as possible. So my solution can be built and so on and so forth. Nothing fancy at all. So and of course, we want to open the selection manager. We don't need to start an update over here. We just need to have a public static list of objects which we can simply access. So in that case, it's a once again a static list. In this case, we're gonna make it of type unit. So a script which is sitting on each of our units, and then I can maybe name this list a uh, unit list. And we can also already initialize that at being a new list of type unit. Open close parentheses and close the line for the or with the semicolon. So what we now can do is whenever we are starting the game, like whenever we are setting our selector and stuff like that, we can now talk to the selection manager and make sure that this particular unit, and this is going to be for any selectable unit later on, is going to be inside our selection manager. So in that case, we're gonna talk to our static unit list. And what we wanna do is we want to add, not as, add, this particular unit we are currently having in our scene. What we now can do is, because we know how much of these units are going to be inside our scene, we can loop through this complete list and actually go and set them all to be active, like all the selectors. We can talk to them like in one loop, basically, because the select manager, manager does not have any problem and he knows about every unit every selectable unit inside our game. So what we now want to do is we want to loop through our selection manager by using a for or for each loop. For each loop probably is a bit better over here. I'm not quite sure. It might not be the fastest, but that's fine. So for each unit, which is a sitting, like I'm going to give it a, uh, just a name over here, unit in our selection manager unit list. So. For each of these, we want to check if they are inside our, you know, if they are inside our selection rectangle. And we need, in this case, take the units uh, transform the position over here. And if that is the case, we want to activate the units selector. In that case, we can say just unit dot, because we are currently looping through it completely, we can talk to set selector. And we can, of course, set all these selectors to be true. Cool, right? Rather fast, rather simple. We just need to make sure that we have a place where we can request if one of the units in our scene are going to be inside our selector. So, and that's basically everything for the unit selection. I guess we only need to do something like deactivate all selectors whenever we are de basically deselecting or whenever we are not selecting anything. We just want to make sure that we deselect all entities or all units. For that, we can also say uh, something like deactivate units, or in this case, all units. Uh, you probably guessed it right. We just need to loop through the same list once again. So for each, um, yeah, actually unit, uh, I'm gonna name it unit in our selection manager dot unit list. For each entity or for each unit inside this list, we want to just talk to the unit itself and say dot select or set selector to be equal to false.
So we can basically, whenever we do our first click, like over here, we want to deselect them all. We just need to talk to it like, uh, what did I say, named it? Uh, deactivate all units. So deactivate all units or deselect. You can also name it deselect. Basically, it doesn't matter, you know. So whenever we deselect all these units, our selection manager is looping through all of these and deselects like everything based on the function for the set selector part over there. Okay, let's go back to Unity. And once again, the script is talking to the main camera, which is going to be this one. But as you can see, it just has the name, but it is currently untagged. And since it's untagged, we need to make sure that this is the main camera. I like tagged with the tag main camera. This is important over here. Let's press play and see what's going to happen. Um, The unit does not have any selector set over there because we need to select this unit once again and make sure that the selector is going to be here inside itself in, in, in its own script. Don't forget to save often. And now let's test again and see what's going on. So this one is now not selected, but when I draw my rectangle, I do not see anything. Cool. So we need to make use of hmm we're gonna need to understand what the what it is about the selector image give me a second to check this one out well usually it should be of course selected whenever we call the correct functions over there but we do not check for the selected units, right? So in that case, we just need to make sure that whenever we are done with our input, that we are then update the, the selected unit or we actually request a selected unit. So we are not just uh, drawing the rectangle or redrawing the rectangle beforehand. Before we do this, we want to make sure we do the check. So check selected units. So we do this only on release, and so we do not create too much, you know, CPU stuff in that. So I'm gonna press play. And let's see what we can do with our new selection system. Bam, as you can see, this little selector is visible over there. Whenever I select it with my uh, little selection rectangle, I'm gonna create a, or, Make sure that I set the camera a bit different so we can see stuff better. Probably I'm gonna I scale this stuff a bit over here so we have more space. And maybe I bring my camera to something like, I don't know, this. So I select the camera, go to game object and align it with my scene view. So you can see both are now aligned. Pretty cool. And the next one is we just want to make sure that we have maybe multiple, you know, multiple units. So this one, and this one, whenever you're later on building more units, you just need to make sure they're landing inside the selector units, but that's what we did already. So now whenever we press play and we have multiple units, you can see we can simply just select these and we cannot do anything with them. But as you can see, these are now seen as being selected. And, you know, later on, you just need to make sure that you anyhow update it so that whenever you're right clicking, for example, that these units are able to move around. Pretty decent. Everything works as it's supposed to. Uh, the calculations are correct. Hi, Blackout. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And, yeah, thanks a lot for, yeah your command over here. So, and basically that's everything what you need to do to create a selector for RTS games, so like you, with using the graphic representation based on the canvas. Once again, make sure that later on in the UI, like whenever you have a hut where you have like building buttons and stuff like that. So whenever you want to build one unit, then you want to make sure that this is not being inside the same selection canvas. So, what I mean by that is you need to create a new canvas which is only doing all of that stuff about HUD. So just simply create a new canvas that's going to be our HUD canvas or something like that. 
and because this needs to be a scale with screen size that's why you cannot do this the same way i'm gonna show you what i mean by that i keep this on constant pixel size and i'm gonna create another image over here just just to uh, demonstrate this pretty quick is you have this image over here i'm gonna go to 2d so we can see stuff whoops see stuff better and uh, let's assume this is going to be our hut and i want our hut to be on the on the right side being stretched something like that and of course maybe give it any color same thing like this and this is now this canvas is now constant pixel size what's going to happen with the, with this part it's going to change its size as you can see it's super slim right now as it has been before so usually it should be like that that's why you need to have this canvas not being constant pixel size but once again this canvas is absolutely crucial that this is going to stay con uh, constant pixel size so whenever now i go to scale with screen size it should represent the same you know distance from the side and you can always check this. You can see now it's not that slim, it's not stretched or anything. It is completely correctly scaled with the screen size. So, and now whenever you have buttons and all the other stuff, uh, you know, to uh, inside that, like whenever you, you know, something like a button over here, just for the sake of competition, you're gonna make it whatever you want it to be. And this is going to be maybe your build button. I don't know, whatever it is, doesn't really matter. Once again, whenever you have this particular button, you can always check that this is going to stay the same. And now you can click on this, create new units and all that stuff, put them into the selection menu or the selection manager, and then you're good to go. And you can even go and take these units and select them and bring them somewhere, do your battle and all the other stuff. So that's everything. This is everything I wanted to cover in this, yeah, rather long video already, or long live stream. So if you have any question, now it's time for you to ask me about this particular stuff over there. Um, yeah, and on the other hand, if you don't have any questions, feel free to check the description down below where basically all my courses um, on Udemy are going to be visible or linked to, except my Zodoku course. But um, yeah, when you want to learn more about RTS games or any other type of game, you can always ask me, uh, you can always hire me when you need, you know, somebody who is going to work on your project or you need anything else then just go to my website octomangames.com and yeah leave a message um by you know sending me over a message over my system over there and i'm gonna contact you back and we discover uh, your problem and of course gonna talk about how i can help you so once again if you have any questions feel free to ask them in i would say the next couple of minutes maybe two or three minutes i'm going to stay here just for you and once again whenever we are done with that then that it is what it is so give me your questions any question at all thanks a lot for tuning in once again i hope you enjoyed this session once again, feel free to comment, subscribe, like, whatever you please and like. And yeah, if you need help on your specific game, feel free to go to my website and hire me or whatever. Or check out my courses. Maybe there's something what you are interested about to learn in. Thanks a lot once again for tuning in. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day and bye-bye.